to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth to be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And this is a video um, in, Kemet, in, in, in what they call in Kemet or Egypt of the biblical depict uh, uh, image of Joseph on inside of a pyramid. All right. In Egypt. And they're going to shine. They're going to use mirrors to shine sunlight through this opening down into the uh, into the pyramid. See the guy, he's holding a mirror and they're going to use mirrors to shine off another mirror onto the wall to show you the depiction of the uh, of the people that were actually there during the time of the Exodus. So my question is, where does wasp come from? What is this white Anglo-Saxon people? Because we're going to show you an image of one of the original Anglo-Saxons, angelic sons of Isaac. As you see in everywhere here, they show, they show the title of the Hebrew. You see the blue circle up? The circle with the dots in it. Yeah, yeah. above it, you see the sign above it? Yeah, now what is that sign? Yeah, this is Emira, he's the overseer of the city. Looks like you can draw a direct connection between these hieroglyphs on the wall and what's in this book. Yeah. Now that was Joseph, the overseer the brings of the city. See, in the beginning, let's play Joseph it again. Joseph out of prison to interpret his dreams. Joseph declares that the dreams portend seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of famine. Joseph recommends that the Pharaoh preserve food from the time of abundance, for use during the time of famine. The Pharaoh is so impressed by Joseph's plan that he places him in charge of his entire court, a role that is memorialized on the walls of royal tombs. So there we go. So we can, so I wanted to give you that, that first uh, portion of the dialogue before we get to, they show you the images of Joseph on the royal tombs. All right. That's Joseph, the overseer. Okay, he's actually darker than the other two. Okay, and these are actual Egyptians, Hamites. So when we tell you that there's a difference between the Egyptian and the Israelite, there is. And you got to remember, he, uh, Joseph, 11 brothers didn't recognize him. He, they reckon, he recognized them. Why? Because he was dressed like an Egyptian and he had a bald face. And they hadn't seen him in, in what, 10, 10 plus years or something like that. And you see him with a uh, uh, dressed like an Egyptian with with a complete bald face. And. Um, you know, they just didn't recognize him, but this right here is an angelic son of Isaac. So what the. What, so who are these people call them to call themselves wasps? Who are these so-called royals in Britain? See, images and art tell a truth that the textbooks don't. Now, now that being said, I'm gonna go back to uh here. Exterminate all brutes. Okay? And that was a particular one I was watching. This guy here. Given his commentary. First of all, uh, let me grab a scripture. Let me grab a scripture. Learn in our own lives to build a better. Uh, let me kill the sound. One moment. And we're going to let him speak. Because one thing that Esau Edom tries to do is he always tries to control the narrative, even when he tells the truth. And the number one brutes that are that are shown why this thing don't want to act up there we go they want to freeze uh being used and abused by these heathens is jacob they show you mainly gad and they show you the uh the northern kingdom in the islands and then they show you um 
And then they show you, of course, the, the, the transatlantic slave trade. All right. Which started not in 1600s, but actually in basically in 1492 when Cristobal Colon, who the world ignorantly refers to as Christopher Columbus, sailed with his with his five uh, Moorish uh, Jews. To, to, he brought Hebrew interpreters to the new world. And then you look at all the Hebrew relics that was found among these copper colored brown fleshed like Negro natives as they were uh, way back then. Before they got raped, robbed, and lightened up by, by force, rape, and murder. All right? And this and and this this uh and this exterminate all brutes is going to be on HBO Plus. And you're gonna hear the Edomites say, let me pull up the scripture, uh, that it's a hard watch. That it's a very hard watch for him because it just shows you all this dark history and all these things. Well, that was done by he and his people. And if you think there is not going to be a recompense for these actions, for destroying the Lord's people and destroying the earth, this is Revelation 6 and 4. And it reads, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And that great sword has been his weapon. You know, that, that book called uh, uh, Guns, Steel, and Germs. Those were the main things that, that uh, Esau Edom used to, to, uh, to destroy the population, even to this day in the form of vaccinations and vaccines. All right, they're still using uh, uh, chemical, you know, germs. I should say, you know, got to be very careful with your wording. All right. So without any further ado. Experiences from when he was a child to current day now from Raul Peck. He's the documentarian that made this documentary. He learned from an early age growing up in Haiti as an African-American boy. And see, there you go. Even when telling the truth, that life Esau Edom is red as he is, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Quoting uh, 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 Genesis, the the, uh, the 25th chapter. All right, Esau Edom is red. There's no such thing as a as a white Anglo-Saxon person or a white anything. They're red. They're the red people that the Bible speaks of, and you can no longer hide behind that lie of whiteness. There is no such thing as white people. It's a, it's a made up concept that came full fruition in 1681 in Virginia when they first put into law and, and put into any uh, legal documents this new uh, 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 race of humanity referred to as white people. Prior to that, there, were, there was no such thing. All right. So black and white are made up uh, uh, social constructs for control. They're social constructs for control. All right. But uh, let's see. I'm trying to find this scripture. It's, it's one. Of, it's in the curses. Yeah, this is Deuteronomy twenty-eight and thirty-seven, and it reads, "And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all the nations, whither Yahweh will lead thee." All right. First Kings 9 and 7. Then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them and the house which I have hollowed for my name will I cast out of my sight and Israel should, and the house means race. So he cast his people, his race, his people, his chosen out of his sight and Israel should be a proverb and a byword among all people. Byword is when you call by a name that is not yours. Negro, Latino, native, Savage, nigger, brute. Wasn't equal for everyone. Black. Everyone. He made the I Am Not Your Negro in 2016 and was the Minister of Culture in 1996 to 1997. This exterminating all brutes is a accumulation of his life's work up to this point. After watching three of the four hours, uh, 
uh, emergency interruption. I just got some information that they may have, uh, that Richie from Boston may have been taken out. That, that um, It's looking like from the information that's being sent to me that they may have killed uh, Richie from Boston, who I believe, and many other Israelites believe he was an Israelite, but he was uh, bringing up too much damning and consuming information, uh, damaging uh, information to the cause, which is uh, Esau Edom, just as I am now. So anyone who's speaking the truth, especially the men of the Lord, are going to be targets. But see, Richie wasn't calling on the right name. You know, he didn't have the the the, the proper covering. But that's just an, an announcement I wanted to make because that information is coming in on my phone as I as I shoot this video. Of this documentary, I'm here to answer the question for you guys. Is this documentary worth a watch? <laughs> So when Gringo I first started Scott. watching this documentary, <laughs> I was a bit concerned. Is this going to be a very one-sided political propaganda thing? So basically, he's worried about it being one-sided because he doesn't want the true nature of his people to be exposed. That they're vagabonds, fugitives from, from, from justice. They're complete, total vagabonds, fugitives of justice who everything that they possess was gotten by rape, robbery, and, and murder. Point blank, period. To lock in. Gotta let him know I'm shooting a vid because he's trying to communicate this information about Richie to me. All right. A fugitive and a vagabond. Right, this is a uh, Genesis four, and I'm gonna start at verse eleven. The point is in uh in verse uh, uh twelve, but it says. Actually, I'm gonna start at verse ten because he's a spiller of blood, the first murderer, the first liar, all that. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, which when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, and a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Esau Edom, the red man, a.k.a. white man, is a fugitive from justice because he wants to try to to come to some sort of conclusion as to where there's no punishment uh, unto him and his people for all the things that he's that he, that he's received from the uh, from the things that his forefathers have done that set him up in these positions of power to set up uh, uh, police departments and and, and jails and and, and and judges and, and, and systems uh, of financial oppression and suppression, you know, banks and loans and all these things. He doesn't want to acknowledge all the rape, robbery, and murder and wrongdoing that was done that enabled him to be able to do these things. Which is a common concern for any documentary that I watch. Furthermore, I understand, as I'm sure most people do, that there's nothing as 100% objective view for humans. Humans are affected by... So let's uh, go to... Real quickly, I'm going to play the trailer, but minus the sound, just so I don't get it hit with anything. Uh, you know... See, that was that red horse that took peace from the earth. 
colonization, extermination. That has been their MO, all right? And then they used, you know, these uh, these different factions, KKK, the Aryan, you know, this Aryan boy. The true Aryans were Elam, so-called Indians of, of India, you know? They had nothing to do with so-called uh, uh, white people. So he's showing you the persecution of what? The so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American who are the children of, of, of the Lord, the children of Israel, the house of of Israel, and that's what, and they're referring to us as brutes, exterminate all brutes. So, I, you know, I am looking forward to watching this documentary. I really am. Um, and I got a couple, couple uh, uh, books that I want to go into. Let me pause right there. Um, proven. This is this is Christopher Columbus, and uh, let me turn this. On, Baba Kasha. Christopher Columbus and the participation of the Jews in the Spanish and Portuguese, Portuguese discoveries uh, by Mayor K. Serling, the Jewish scholar who wrote this. And um, when you get to uh, uh, page 95, um, it says, and I wrote a lot of notes, this is my book, so, but it says, Indians and Israelites. As a matter of fact, I wrote, I wrote on here seven, 17 different sources that that uh, uh that prove that that fact. All right, and I'll just mention a couple of them. You got uh, the Atlantic Dispor Disporas of the Jews, conversos and crypto Jews in the age uh, of mercantilism from 1500 A.D. That was that's one book source. You got uh. Esau Edom and Jury, C.F. Uh, uh, Parker. You got uh, the Arabs, Beltran Thomas, page 339. Saudi Arabia uh, inhabitants were originally uh, uh, much darker. Um, you got uh, John Wesley Power. Power, he declares artifacts prior to Christopher Columbus not to be used. Uh, 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 if they were found before 1789 and, you know, the back Creek stone. So all the information that basically proved that the natives were Israelites, he was trying to hide. You got William Beestums. Um, and these are different, just different books and sources of information proving that Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans are indeed Israelite and, and who the Edomites are. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, an illegal principle, Ecomendia, was a, a benign agency for the Indian Hispanization. Uh, page 18 in Delacasse's book, Andrew Hurley's uh, trans, translation of, of, of uh, Delacasse's. Um, you, got, you have Rodan, Adair, Bradshaw, Mel, Sanders, Delacasse's, uh, Ezra, Simon Weisenthal, The Cell of Hope. Um, 17, he, he, this was my number 17, A View of the Hebrews, 1825 by Ethan Smith, letter from Thomas Jefferson that mentioned to Lewis, he, he wrote a, a, a letter to, to uh, Clark and Lewis basically tell, saying that these people were Israelites. So the, the evidence of who they are is, is just beyond, you know, you can't get around it. But this is uh, Lewis de Torres, this is actually page 95 in the book that I'm reading. Louis de Torres, the first European who discovered the use of tobacco, was also the first person of Jewish stock who settled in Cuba. He won favor of the ruler of, of, of Kaku and received from him as, as represents not merely lands, but also slaves, five adults and a child. The king and queen of Spain granted him a yearly allowance of 8,645 8, uh, Maravitz, Maravitis, I guess that was a currency back then, and he died in the newly discovered land in Cuba, Española, and in other lands which he discovered, Columbus found natives who had caquis and their own language and traditions. To what race did these aboriginals of America belong? Several writers have asserted and, and have displayed much learning in attempting to prove that the aborigines were descendants of Jews. 
Enough said, man, because we could just read on and on and on. And, and the evidence of that is the fact that Christopher Columbus brought over five Hebrew interpreters, the Torres being one of them. All right. You can't get around this stuff, man. And how much Esau Edom uh, uh, hates you. All right. And his women, too. There's this is a, uh, I'm going to read a, a quick insert from from this book, A Hidden Heroism. All right. Black soldiers in America's wars. Matter of fact, we fought in all your wars by Robert uh, B. Egerton. I bought that from uh, Barnes, this book from Barnes and Noble well over 10 years ago. But this is uh, page 79. All right. And I'm going to start at the second uh, paragraph um, of page 79. All right. Just to speak on these Edomite women and how they hate you. And they were just as violent toward Jacob as, as the Edomite male. All right. This is a uh, race riots erupted as well in East St. Louis, Illinois, during the summer of 1917. After an African-American was rumored to have killed a white man, 3000 white men hunted down, shot, beat and burned blacks for four days without any interference from the police or National Guardsmen. White women joined in the killing. One of them slashing the throat of a black woman. Gangs of white women beat any black woman that they could lay their hands on. A black paraplegic, paraplegic was burned alive and a two-year-old black boy was shot. Then thrown into a burning building in response, some blacks fought back. Before, before a partial peace was restored, eight whites were killed. Four, bullet, four, four by bullets apparently aimed at blacks and a hundred blacks were shot or mangled and beaten to various degrees of helplessness as a U.S. Senator later told an, an investigating committee. Race relations within many Southern training camps were tense, were as, were, were, were tense as well. Insults were exchanged. Fights sometimes occurred. African-American soldiers were typically openly discriminated against and nothing has changed. You just saw the the uh the 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 northern kingdom the brown skinned northern kingdom uh guy was was abused by the police the second lieutenant while in uniform while complying nothing has changed all right in some camps black soldiers lacked sanitary and bathing facilities and were housed in tents whereas whites live in comparative luxury in barracks so nothing has changed man everything in this society has been doctored up and geared toward the comfort of Esau Edom. Let me grab one more scripture and close. This was more about bringing out uh, uh, information. Um, uh, uh, what was I looking for? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. Salakia. That was my professor sending me some information that I'm actually going to look into and use. This, is, But this is Sirach uh, 10 and 8. And it reads, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. This is how they got a grip on the world, by the use of that sword and unrighteous dealings. There's one in Nahum that I want to. I think it's three and one. If I'm not mistaken. Right. It says, uh, this is Nahum 3 and 1. It says, Woe to the bloody city is all full of lies and robbery, and the prey departeth not, because now they abuse us uh, at will, and they abuse us also with contractual uh, law. They abuse us with contractual uh, law, and we're forced to, uh, to, to never ending payments and taxes. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Abashai Bashim Rakak Badash Wa Ababa Ba Shalom.